Hello, good afternoon. Um, as you said, my name is Juru Bilimoria and what I like doing is starting organizations because I think every one of us can do something to change the world. So here you, here you see two things, uh, Child Helpline International and Aflatun. And I've started six organizations, so I'll share with you a bit of my journey and um, ask you all some questions on the way if that's okay. Uh, I started very young, I actually started when I was 16 and that's when I argued with my mom and started my first organization. <laughs> you know, we all do that as, as adolescents, right? And that was basically to teach math skills to students so that uh, they would not fail in school. And that was where it started. Then of course I went abroad, studied the whole gamut and I was working with street children in India and they said that they wanted somewhere where they could call up 24 hours a day, not between the convenient times of us social workers. Because they said, you all make money, you make it at our expense but you're never there when we need you. That was basically what they said. So they said, have a service. When we first went there, and I approached the telecom authorities and other people. Uh, they said, a phone service for street children? And who will run it? You mean professional people? I said, no, the kids themselves will run it. And they thought I was crazy. So they refused and we didn't get a toll-free number from the government. So we tried again and this time we said, let's be smart. But I was teaching at Tata Institute, but there were no student researchers who wanted to work. So we got a bunch of street kids together and they did their first ever research study on why they as street kids wanted to have a phone service for street children. So we took this research study and then we went and then they presented it to the Deputy Director General of the Telecom. We got a toll free number and today in a way they say it's history. Childline India is a project of the Government of India. It is part of the child protection system. We received 2 million phone calls from children, are spread in 80 districts across the country. And based on the calls which came from Childline India, we now have a government policy where the government was forced to acknowledge the amount of demand there was for protection services. And from a budget of 1 crore, that's around 250,000, they now give a 100 crore integrated child protection scheme linked to the policy. So that's what happened and it only happened because a bunch of kids had enough guts and were willing to follow and do stuff. From Childline India, which is still where my heart lies, we moved into Child Helpline International. So that's what you see over there. Many countries started asking us about helplines for children by children. Germany has a very established helpline, which has been there for almost uh, 25 years, which is from all of you know. But there are no helplines in economically developing countries because everyone said telecoms cannot work for economically developing countries, even though China and India had proved otherwise. So we said, okay, let's take up the challenge globally, and we did. Today, we are a child helpline international is in 150 countries. We have live helplines in more than 110 countries and respond to between 14 to 18 million calls and contacts annually and have helped on an annual basis more than a million children who have been abused from different sorts of abuses. So basically if you will look at this story, I think the important thing is that any one of you, any one of you can have an idea and then if you just follow your heart and your dream, and it's easy. Just just go ahead and just just do it, you know, and you'll be able to work with a lot of people. So looking at that. But after taking Child Helpline Global and you know today since its inception we have responded to more than fifty five million calls. That's more than half a billion phone calls and helped millions and millions of children. But I kept telling myself I don't need to be complacent. What is the cause of the problems? Why do say children run away? Why is there abuse in the homes? What is happening? Even with the economic crisis, everyone's talked about the millions that have been lost, the billions of bailouts, rescue packages, the whole gamut. But the truth is that the child 
who is most affected, nobody has ever talked about that. Through the crisis, more children have been abused at home, more children have been forced to drop out, more children are not able to meet their basic school fees, and malnourishment in families has increased. So this is something which is happening where macroeconomics affects children. So the question, not just with the crisis, but even when I spoke to street children, why did they run away from home, is because they saw no opportunities at home. So then the question was, how can you work to create a society where every child really feels empowered? And then the question I posed, and I think actually some of my kids said, is what you really need to know is know about money. Know how to use it. And over here I'm going to take a one second break and ask you all, how many of you started saving when you were children? Just raise your hands. Most of you. How many of you who have kids do teach, uh, teach your children to save? Or your cousins or those who have kids, you teach your kids to save. What happens in a family which has never learned to save? Do they ever manage? Be it in the Germany, be it in the US, be it in rural India. What happens? There is nobody who can teach children about saving, teach them about investments, teach them about believing and having a choice. And that is what Aflatun does. Aflatun teaches children to believe in themselves. I can go on and on about Aflatun, but here I'm going to take a two minute pause and ask them to show you a film which was made by Aflatun with our kids in parallel. So I'll step aside so you can see the Aflatun film which brings the spirit of what Aflatun is.
still ask, what was there in the film? What were the messages we were communicating? I have seven minutes, so I can ask. <laughs> Any idea? What was the main message that Aflatun, according to the film, communicates? Eh? An child. Yeah, you're an empowered child. Yeah. Anyone else? No? Learning can be fun. Learning can be fun. Someone else? Saving money. Saving money, yeah. That's one of the main things of Latin teaches. It teaches a lot of things. It teaches you to believe in yourself. It teaches you to save your money, resources, water, electricity, everything. And it teaches you to be entrepreneurial so you can go and follow your dream. That's what it teaches. Where Aflatun is the fireball which unites approximately 800,000 children in 40 countries across the world. When we started with Aflatun, everyone said, we are not funding this. Teaching children to save money is bad. I'm not joking, honestly. And I said, but don't you teach your own children? Yes, but teaching children to save money is bad. No NGO was willing to collaborate and no donor was willing to fund with us. Now, so for the first phase, actually, my husband and myself said, okay, we'll fund it to whatever extent of money we have. We aren't rich, but we said, let's just do it. And then we built it. In 2008, we launched a campaign. And I just, last year, we had around 560,000 children saving. And I have a question to all of you. How much do you think last year 560,000 children saved? Most of these children are from less than a dollar a day families. How much, take your guess, how much do you think they saved collectively? Remember, that's less than a dollar a day families. One million. Hmm? One million. Go higher. <laughs> You're right, 2.6 million. That's what they saved. And how, can you imagine? 2.6 million is what the children saved. And they started 5,000 enterprises. Enterprises to start livestock. So a child saved, bought a chicken. Why? So that he or she could then have money to go to school because they saved the money, have the chicken, get eggs, make a revenue, and can eat. Some school children took gunny sacks and planted potatoes in their school playground. Yet others took waste and made bands from them. Yet others decided that there was enough space to do rice. So they planted rice fields in that small patch and that became part of the thing. Others opened school canteens and a zillion more things. So all I'm trying to say is that if we are able to teach children, they have the power and the ability to be the agents of change. And that is what Aflatoon is about. So that is what we do, that is what we believe in, that is what we take forward. Nine out of ten times when we start something, nobody is willing to believe in us. And I can go on and on about how many people who say no. But there are some people who are willing to invest in us. And I think those are actually the more courageous people than people like me who want to start things. I think Bart sitting there will agree. Because you start, fine. But it's the investors who say, hey, we believe in you, we take it forward. And that means every one of you who is sitting here in this room has the ability to be an investor and to be the change, to be the movement which we need so that our children don't have a financial crisis, so that our children can see a future and like the film said, be empowered children and citizens. And the change is not with me, it's with you. So I hope we can do it. Thank you very much.